Hey everyone, here's an awkward 8 minutes of potentially useful League of Legends information. I hope you enjoy. If Viego turns into Ornn, he can use Ornn's passive to upgrade items for his team. Suppression is the only thing that can stop someone from smiting. Shaco's clone's level will depend on the last time you saw the enemy Shaco, which means the real Shaco could be level 6, but his clone could appear to be level 5 still. This is a very easy way to bait your opponent in. If a Ghost Poro sees an enemy champion, it'll give you an alert ping. Additionally, Ghost Poros will even run away from an invisible champion and ping you away. Contrary to popular belief, Warwick's ultimate will still do damage even if he's blinded. For those who didn't know this, refillable potions build into corrupting potions. You can change the way room pages are displayed to help make picking keystones easier in champ select. Apparently some of you didn't know this as well, but you can hit the undo button to refund your item for full gold. Also you can sell items in your inventory by right clicking once. If you're unable to break a shield, then the champion's recall will not be stopped. If you're playing as Ivern and someone on your team gets ulted by a Mordekaiser, you can place your bushes and they'll show up inside his alt. Yeah, I don't know how useful this would be, but you can do it. That's what counts. You can spell shield Silas when he's trying to steal your ultimate and cancel it. You can check to see if a bush is warded by using Pike's health bar. When Pike has gray health, instead of using W, go into a bush, and if you don't regen health while you're in the bush, it means it's warded. You can flash while in the middle of a Darius ult. This is good for trying to dodge other abilities or when you're trying to plan for your next target. I feel like everybody already hates her enough, but you can parry Ignite as Fiora. Additionally, you can also parry the dragon's knockback. The only thing you really can't parry is turret shot. You can use apps like Blitz to help give you some huge advantages like being able to see jungle timers in game, being able to see what skills to level up next, the ability to compare your CS to pro players, or even have room pages fill itself out in champion select, which also means no more going into games with the wrong runes. Also the best thing is all of these features can be found in this same app called Blitz, who I'm also proud to say is the sponsor of today's video. Post game Blitz also shows all of your stats and even gives you feedback on ways you can improve in the game. Additionally, you can scout out your team and opponents before the game to get some extra information like their win rates and also learn things like how much I suck at warding. A solo killer though. Also it's free. There are a bunch of other features too and it can seriously help you improve at the game so make sure to check it out with my link in the description. You cannot flash a Rek'Sai's ultimate. You can place wards and drink potions while recalling which also means always use your refillables when recalling. There's really no reason not to. Super minions will stop respawning two waves before the enemy inhibitor is going to respawn. This is there to prevent the inhibitor from instantly being destroyed again because of the super minions. You can watch your own minions on the mini map to figure out where your opponent's minions are. You should try and avoid standing behind Baron when taking it because of the AoE spikes he'll launch if you're there. Typically, Baron activates an ability once every 6 basic auto attacks, but that'll be increased to 4 if people are behind him. If you notice that the enemy mid lane wave looks a little weird, it's possible that the enemy jungle just switched sides. This is typically true especially around the 2-3 minute mark. Towers deal increasingly more damage with each hit. You can block Orn's ultimate with Brahm's shield. Nami's passive is called Surging Tides, which allows Nami to grant her allies movement speed for a short duration when they're hit by her abilities. In other words, your Nami may not be trolling you after all if she's hitting you with a bubble. That is if she hasn't already used her E on you. Apparently there's a lot of you who still may not know this, but you can click on enemies Ivern has rooted to rush to them. This is kind of essential if Ivern is your jungler and ganking. If you buy Guardian Angel on Viego and get a champion's soul and then die, your GA will not proc because you temporarily don't have his items. Just something to be aware about. Most things disappear in Mordekaiser's ultimate, like Alawi's tentacles, Chaco's boxes, Gangplank's ultimate, Tibbers, York's maiden, and even wards disappear. Additionally, if Teemo drops shrooms in the Shadow Realm, they'll remain there until the next time he's ulted in that area. Speaking of Mordekaiser's ultimate, Olaf can use his ultimate to free himself from it and Gangplank can use his orange to do the same. I don't know how often this will happen, but Mordekaiser's ultimate will not go off if you go invisible fast enough. You can pick up Tibbers with Syndra's W. You can use QSS to free yourself from Urgot's ultimate. The top and mid turrets receive bonus defense for the first 5 minutes of every game. You can use wards to bait out abilities from opponents before a fight against someone like Leona, who will a lot of the time auto attack Q auto attack to get rid of wards. You can block Twisted Fate's yellow card with Shen's W. Lucian can do a drive-by ultimate in Bard's Tunnel or while taking Thresh's Lantern. Even Tom Kench eating Lucian won't stop his ultimate. The same thing can be done with Samir's ultimate. If Caitlyn starts using her ultimate on you, wait until she fully channels it or you can see a bullet to become untargetable. If you do it any sooner, her ultimate will go on a 5 second cooldown, but if you wait long enough, she doesn't get a refund on it. 
If you're playing against a champion with Thormil or Sunfire Cape, use it to your advantage when they're trying to take your turret. All you have to do is stand next to them or hit them once and it'll trigger your turret aggro. Ard can use his ultimate to protect a Rift Herald from his charge, and it will not charge again once the turret is no longer invincible. You can create pre-built item pages that can help save you some time when buying in-game. Also, Blitz will do this automatically for you. Baron's stats cannot be reduced by any means and is immune to all crowd control. Kane can use Smite while he's in his ultimate. Press the attack will only stay on the real clone. This works for any champions with clones. If multiple people hit a ward, it will give double gold because it will give both players credit. Low health clones can give dark harvest stacks. For example, if Nico were to turn into a low level teammate, you can essentially get a free dark harvest stack from it. Unlike potions, biscuits will instantly give you 50 mana and will also permanently increase your mana by 50. Turrets will get some bonus defense every time you take a plate. The defense continues to get stronger for each plate you take too. This wears off after a few minutes, so sometimes it's better to leave and come back later. You can drop a ward on abilities like Thresh's Lantern in order to make it difficult for the enemy to click on it. If you're trying to level up a new account, you can get your first win of the day XP from a bot game. This can also help prevent smurfs from showing up in games with new players. Have you ever wondered why some people's health bar looks a little different? They're most likely using colorblind mode, which can help your health bar stand out a little bit more. Level 2 will always come right after the melee minion from the second wave is killed in a solo lane. This is crucial to know for those early game trades. If you want to try out new skins or new champions, consider checking out the PBE server where you'll have every champion unlocked and skins are extremely easy to obtain. You literally get like a couple thousand RP per win. Play in unlocked mode. While super minions are spawning, no siege minions will spawn in that lane. On ARAM, Nico can start her ultimate, snowball in, and then hit the enemy team with little time to react. This is just kind of a cosmetic one, but you can choose your profile background by going to your profile and clicking the settings icon here. You can lock or unlock your camera by pressing Y or clicking the camera button in the bottom right next to the minimap. The item shop can be moved around and resized by dragging its bottom right corner. It's possible to change the size of your minimap. This may be especially useful for people who struggle with map awareness, like me. Also, you can move it to the left side of your screen as well. Patch 11.5 just went through, so here's a chart of all the changes that took place. Seven champions received nerfs, most notably Udi year and eight champions received buffs. Also the B skins got released. The Kogma one kind of scares me though, not gonna lie. Wait before upgrading your abilities when starting the game, especially if you go for an invade. This is especially important if you're playing a champion like Lux who has a snare, but typically starts E level one. If you go to invade and have already started your E, then you won't be able to snare them. But if you haven't leveled anything up yet and have a good shot at your enemy, then you can level it up and get them with a snare. Worst case scenario, you just level it up when you get in the lane. Also, sometimes it's good to wait and see how aggressive they're playing and level up in response to them. If they're playing aggressive and I'm playing someone like Aurelia, then I'll start my E first. But if they play more passive, I may start Q. You can really take advantage of this with Kled because of how his W works. Once you hit level two, you don't have to upgrade it immediately. Instead, you can wait for a good engage with your Q and then level up your W right after, guaranteeing it'll be up for full damage. Going into a non-worded bush drops minion aggro. After patch 11.5, Urgot now has a 53.4% win rate, which is the highest in the game. Yo, thanks for what? Oh, what the frick was that? Yo, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. And also, don't forget to check me on Twitch and join the Discord to come hang out. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.